Uh, Jordy and, and Kate Ferris and a bunch of other folks founded it back in the day uh, out of some uh, postdoc work that he had been doing at, uh, at UBC. Uh, and and we, in the interim years, we built quite a company. And I think this is a really important company that you can all be very proud of. It is a high growth, high margin business already. And we're just at the very beginning stage of our, our commercialization here and our creation of this business. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, exciting years ahead of us. The company has, has patented, we have 100 granted US patents. And that's really an exceptional accomplishment. I don't know many companies that have patents that are important as, as important as we have. And, and also, we've done 60 peer-reviewed uh, scientific papers. And uh, I talk to venture capitalists, and I sometimes I provocatively ask them, Do you, have you ever had a portfolio company that's published one peer-reviewed scientific paper? Now, and I haven't gotten anyone that's even come up with one. So to do 60, I think, is, uh, is, is quite amazing. And, and that work is a little bit of a proxy for the work that, that our team has done here and all the science and all the engineering and all the innovation that goes on here just, to, just kind of proves what uh, the value of, of what we've done here. We've raised a lot of money over the years. We've raised $130 million of capital. Most of that is in the form of venture capital from U.S. and Canadian investors. Uh, we've also been um, fortunate to get government grants and things like that, so it's totaled up to $130 million. But I think even that, it sounds like a big number, is a bargain for uh, when you look at what we've really accomplished here as a company, because this is a huge project that we've, we've, we've uh, managed to uh, accomplish here. Uh, and, and I think one of the things I'm most proud of is our first customers. So we have uh, now Google and NASA as customers. Google and NASA combined forces to, to purchase one of our computers, uh, and that's been installed down in Mountain View, California. And I can't ask for uh, two more forward-looking, kind of innovative companies to be working with. They really aren't. I mean, they're at the top of their game on the planet. Uh, and that follows Lockheed Martin, the, the, the world's largest defense contractor, as our first customer. Again, top of their game, best in their business. Uh, so we really have a tremendous uh, start on our, on our customer base that, that uh, we're all very proud of. Uh, just a little bit of the company history. The first few years of the company, first four or five years, were really about gathering IP and figuring out what the best way to build a quantum computer is. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to do quantum computers, but the inspiration of the founding team was, let's build something that can give us commercial viability or something that's useful in the hands of, of customers as soon Back in history, and kind of looked at uh, our progression over time, uh, sort of on the timeline that we talked about. And you know, we started with a four qubit processor and, and going up forward and to the right. And it amounts to basically us quadrupling the number of qubits every two years. And we believe we're on a path to continue to do that, perhaps ad infinitum. We don't know if there's an end to this in, in mind or, or not, but we are going to just continue to go on that slope. And, and push the technology in different dimensions, and, and qubits aren't the only measure of performance. There are a lot of different things that, that you need to do. And, uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out and, uh, and seeing what we're doing. Um, there are a lot of people in the audience who I don't recognize. So um, I'm Jordy. I was one of the founders of the company way back in the day. And um, many of you may have friends and family who have been around almost since the very beginning, like Mohammed. Uh, uh, there are lots of people here who have spent an enormous amount of uh, not only sweat, but blood and tears also on this project. And I'm going to tell you why they care so much. So that's what I'm going to try to do with my time here. How many of you have actually seen one of our machines in person? Have you guys got a chance to go and actually look at one of the black boxes? Actually, not, not many. I figured you guys would be out there, like, uh, you know, taking a look at the floor. But the, you're, you're that we've created that's unlike any other artifact that's ever been built in the history of humankind. It does something with nature that's entirely unique. So, how many of you know something about quantum mechanics? Just a little bit? Okay, no, but not many. So, here, here's the thing. Uh, 
we are we are creatures of, of blood and flesh and bone and meat, and we have senses. We have eyes. We have ears. We have fingers, and we uh, we make our way through the world trying to figure out what's going on. And this process of science is trying to use these rough tools that we have to try to understand things in the world around us. But we know that we see the world through veils. What is actually there is not what we perceive. We have common sense views of the way things should be, and they work often. But when we build machines that are able to look down deep past these veils, what we see is something very different than what we think is there. And sometimes what we see down there in the very cold and the very uh, small is shockingly counter to our common sense. And this shouldn't be all that surprising because um, why should we? be able to understand like the nature of physical reality because you know we're a couple ancestors removed from an ape-like thing that was living in the trees, right? And in fact, it's amazing that we can build these kinds of tools, um, but we're kind of like just on the edge. So what is what what is in that chip uses an observation about the way the universe works that was discovered about 100 years ago, and it's our most successful theory of nature. Of all of the variety of types of science that humans have ever engaged in, one of them stands out as being the most successful model of the way things really are, and it's quantum mechanics, and it makes a very interesting prediction. Each of you, no matter how old you are, from, from young to old and everywhere in the middle, can think back in their life and imagine and, and think about a decision that you made or someone made that really affected your life. So think about that. You know, everybody has these things where you met somebody because you made, you decided to go to lunch and you ended up marrying them. If you hadn't made that decision, you never would have met. And all of the subsequent stuff that happened in your life would be completely different. And it's a natural thing to think about. What if I hadn't gone to lunch? and I hadn't met that person, where would I be now? Now quantum mechanics makes this prediction that all of those paths not taken are all real in the same sense of the, the thing that you remember is real. So in your memories of your past, in this set of decisions that have brought you to this point in this room, there are an enormously large number of other yous there are an enormously large, large number of realities where you were never born because of the decisions of your ancestors. And all of these is just as real as the one that we're in now. And what we are trying to do here, your friends and family, this organization, is to use this precious knowledge to build machines that can actually create manipulate and use these parallel realities in the service of this one. We want to grab those parallel realities from this abstract space in which they live and crunch them down into this chip. And we want to be able to do that to make that resource, that thing that's like fire, this physical resource that nature affords us, we want to be able to use it to serve our needs. We want to be able to use those parallel universes to compute things that then come back and affect us and answer questions in ours. So the reason why I want you to pay close attention when you're looking at those big black boxes is that inside those boxes is a point, a chip, upon which is happening something that has never happened in the history of the Earth. It's an engineered thing which has become a nexus point for all of these parallel realities. The shadows of all of these different universes intersect at a physical point inside of one of those boxes. You can think of it as a portal to all of these other alternate possibilities that we're trying to use in order to compute the answers to the problems we will solve. So this thing is not just a computer. It's an entirely new type of thing that has never existed before. And if you have a friend or family member who comes to the dinner table or comes back from work 
and it's just blah, blathering on and about something and appears very excited, but you don't know what they're talking about. Part of the reason is that this, this, there's this deep fundamental need that humans have to explore. And while what we're trying to do here, obviously you can sell it. You can make a lot of money. But that's not why I'm here. I mean, that's nice. But if I wanted to make a lot of money, I could have been a banker or something. You know, there are lots of ways to make money. This really is about exploring. It's about being like Shackleton and going into the Antarctic and eating penguin for 30 months just because no one has ever been there. So we, many of us, will die in the service of exploration if we need to because it's so important to us. We want to know what is going on in the universe and, and use it. So lots of people who have explored in this way ended up not surviving their encounter with the unknown. And there's a lot of risks involved in this kind of project. You know, there's the obvious ones that we're doing something crazy. How do you know you're going to have a job in a couple months? This has always been a threat in this project. I've been doing this now for almost 15 years, and for not a single month of this entire process have I been sure that I'm going to get a paycheck in the next month. Not a single month, the whole time, including now. So everybody bears this sort of risk when you do this sort of thing. And of course, there's all computer. So it's 10 degree kelvins? Milli kelvins. Milli kelvins. Oh, it's just teeny tiny above what it should be. 273? 270. Minus 273.05. Come over here. There it is. A quantum computer. It's a huge quantum computer. Это просто самое, это вот только купленный фильтратор.